Hi, I'm Nate Adams of EnergySmartOhio.com and NateTheHouseWhisperer.com. Um, I'm also the author of The Home Comfort Book. Um, and I have a lot of people that ask me about heat pumps and how much they cost to operate. Uh, they are generally viewed as a more expensive option. Uh, and so uh, I wanted to take a little bit of time and walk through a couple of projects to show what actual real world results are. And this is in a fairly cold climate. Uh, I live in Cleveland, Ohio, so uh, we get plenty cold winters here. They're not absolutely brutal, but they're not warm. Uh, so let's take a look. Uh, for starters, I just want to brush up on the last video that I put up, which is explaining the different types of heat pumps that you can have in houses. So in residential heat pumps, you have two main options. You have ground source, also known as geothermal, although it's not truly geothermal, uh, and that pulls heat from inside the ground below the ground to heat your house. And then there's air source, which actually pulls heat out of the cold air. Uh, to heat your house. Uh, these don't work as well as it gets cold or colder, but uh, the newer versions do work quite well, as you'll see shortly. There's two different versions of those. There's mini splits, which uh, just have a head that goes on the wall. There's no ductwork. Uh, it looks like uh, when you go to a hotel and they just have the unit that's the, the heater and the air conditioner, uh, that's sort of what they're like. And then standard split units are uh, like what when you have a traditional forced air furnace or air conditioner, uh, that's a split unit because it has the inside unit in the basement or the attic with the fan uh, that attaches to the ductwork, and then an outside unit uh, that is either removing or adding heat. Um, and then of the standard splits, there's two different versions of those. You can have a hybrid, which is a furnace with a heat pump on top. And a heat pump basically is an air conditioner. It's just a two-way air conditioner. So an air conditioner can only cool. A heat pump can heat and cool. And you can stack one of those on top of a furnace. And then the other option is heat pump only, uh, where uh, oftentimes our clients are deleting their gas meters. We're actually taking them off. Uh, and I'm going to show you one of those. Uh, so this is an all-electric option if you're looking to uh, move to renewable energy and move away from fossil fuels. Uh, this is, in my mind, the best option. So let's dig into the projects. So don't heat pumps cost more. So this is a tale of two houses. Uh, the one on the left has a furnace. The one on the right is heat pump only. Now these happen to be very similar houses, which is nice because uh, it, it's a pretty valid comparison. Uh, so they're built within three years of each other. They're both a uh, little, right about 100 years, a little bit over. Um, they're both about 1,700 square feet. They both have one male occupant, um, uh, and both of them got the same basic project. So they both have a walk-up attic and uh, spray foamed up here and also up here. Uh, and then their final air leakage with the blower door uh, post project was almost identical. Uh, so these are very comparable homes and they're in a very similar climate. Um, uh, these houses are about 15 miles apart from each other. Okay, so I want to talk outdoor temperatures just a little bit because this is where heat pumps really shine. If you watch the other video, one of the reasons we really like heat pumps is they can match what uh, the house needs to heat or cool it at any given moment. Most of the year is pretty average in temperatures. So you can see this is a chart of outdoor temperatures in Cleveland, Ohio, and this is how many hours per year uh, the temperature is in a certain bin. So like down here is minus 5 to 0, uh, this is 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, and so forth. So you can see that almost the entire year is spent above 15, uh, actually above 20, and uh, below about 75 degrees. Uh, or, uh, actually, I take it back, that's uh, below 85 degrees. So this is the meat of the year. And what heat pumps can do is because they have relatively small output, and particularly if you use a variable speed one that has multiple speeds, multiple stages, uh, it will match what your house needs, the meat of the year. Because uh, typically we are sizing HVAC for right here. Um, it's a five and below. 
Uh, it's actually, well, technically it's uh, sized for five in our climate. Your climate will have a different temperature. And then we size for 88 degrees on the high because we spend 1% of the year above and below those temperatures. So heat pumps can do a really nice job here. And when you're in the meat of this, they're very efficient uh, and they can actually be less expensive to operate than furnaces. When you get into the extremes, they get more expensive. So uh, let's move along. So this is the actual energy cost from December of 2015 through December of 2016 for uh, the furnace home. So $1,813.62. Now this is gas and electric. The tricky part is when we delete the gas meter, it's now kind of tough to understand what the heating cost is specifically. So I combined them all. Uh, again, very similar occupants. So uh, this is a, a pretty good comparison. And meanwhile, the heat pump only house costs $1,730 for the year. So not a huge difference. You know, we're talking $85 a year difference here. Uh, this was a little bit on the mild size, aside winter-wise, uh, but not super mild. Uh, now we had a milder winter the next winter. So uh, I took the data from April to, uh, of 16 to April of 17, and you can see there's a huge split between them. Uh, there's a couple of factors here. Uh, I figured out some secrets on the heat pump on this and figured out how to drastically reduce its energy use. Um, and then it was a much milder winter. So uh, uh, the key thing to note is these houses uh, have fairly low operating costs and the heat pump only house actually costs less to operate in this instance. So this is not always true. But my point is not to show you what's true all the time. It's to show you that this is possible, um, and it is possible. So keep in mind, too, that natural gas, uh, Ohio is frack land. So uh, actually, Portage County, where I live, is one of the largest fracking counties in the U.S., um, and uh, natural gas here is really cheap. So these are the lowest prices we've seen 30, 40, 50 years. Uh, and despite that, you can see that uh, an all-electric home is doing pretty well. By the way, our electricity prices aren't super low. We're around 13 cents a kilowatt hour now, which is middle of the pack uh, nationwide, maybe a little bit below average, but it's, it's not cheap by any means. Uh, so uh, it, the math is working. So the key thing to note here is that air source heat pumps aren't necessarily more expensive to run than gas furnaces. So we're actually taking gas meters off with cheap fracked gas uh, and we're making the math work. So that's the point there. Now, I want to shift gears just a little bit and talk about future energy prices. When you buy a new HVAC system for your house, you are making a 15 to 20 year commitment to whatever fuels those systems burn, because uh, that's about how long the useful life of an HVAC system is. So choose wisely. Let's talk just a little bit about what's coming. So the biggest thing to realize is for the first time in a long time, we actually have uh, a time when energy prices are getting cheaper. Now this is only true of renewables, so this is uh, solar and wind primarily, um, but obviously those don't need any energy to, uh, or you don't have to burn anything to create energy. They just use uh, otherwise wasted sunlight uh, and then otherwise wasted wind. So as the, the price of solar has fallen, you can see solar installs have been skyrocketing. So. Uh, that industry has been experiencing very large growth over the last decade, uh, which is exciting for me to see because then we aren't burning fuels anymore and we can be much more energy independent. Uh, and I really like those things. Now, fossil fuels, on the other hand, uh, you can see the gradual trend is up. Uh, so this is uh, not necessarily heating fuels, but it's gasoline, compressed natural gas, and diesel fuel. Uh, but in general, you can see that the, uh, uh, the fuel prices are trending up. Uh, now, will this continue? I don't know for sure, but it does seem like we are, we're getting into harder and harder to harvest energy out there. 
Uh, example I use is, do you think the BP oil spill would have happened in 5,000 feet of water drilling 18,000 feet down if you could just poke a hole in the ground in Texas or Pennsylvania and get the oil out? Uh, we're getting to where the stuff's not particularly easy to get to. So um, the question mark that you want to have in your mind is, will electricity costs go down while fossil fuel costs go up? And as I showed you, this is just an anecdote, it's one example, but um, as soon as you find one example, you can usually find more. If heat pumps make sense today, in a fairly cold climate like Cleveland, Ohio, what happens when electricity prices are cheaper still? Uh, do you want to be locked into needing to use fossil fuel? The other thing to keep in mind is if electricity prices do go up, you can make your own electricity. Can you make your own natural gas or fuel oil or propane? Not, not easily. So electricity is some solar panels away and some batteries away uh, if need be. So you can have personal ener energy independence if needed. Okay, so my future bet uh, down the road is heat pump only. Uh, so I'm looking forward to doing this to a house, my own house at some point here current house we have is a tricky candidate, so we're actually strongly considering moving, and one of the reasons is so that I can electrify our own home. Uh, I've done the few pieces I can here, but uh, the, the next step is difficult and expensive. But, so this is where I don't want you to take this as a general rule. Uh, let's take a deeper look at this house, because it requires design to be able to get the energy costs as low as uh, this house is experiencing. By the way, there are highly, highly detailed uh, case studies on both of these on Energy Smart Ohio. This is the 1915 and the 1918 case study. So this is the home performance project we did. And home performance is the art and science of making your home comfortable, healthy, long-lasting, and efficient. That's what it's all about. It's basically the field of medicine for your house. It's making it an amazing place to live that's healthy to live and it will last a long time. Uh, so uh, we pulled energy bills from two different time periods. So this was a unique project where the client agreed to put the heat pump in first, go through a winter, and then the next winter do the insulation and tighten the house up. So having a tight, well-insulated home is critical to making heat pumps work, and it's going to become very obvious here. So uh, before the project, this house was quite leaky. This won't mean a great deal to you, but I talk about this a lot uh, on the Energy Smart blog um, and in Home Comfort 101. Uh, you'll see what this means. This is a pretty leaky house for a 1,700 square foot house. Um, and then post project, we got it down to 1,860. Uh, CFM 50. It's cubic feet per minute, 50 pascals. Not that it matters, but that is uh, how blower door uh, numbers are measured. Um, and here's what the difference was that it made. So this house was burning a lot of electricity. So typical uh, energy use, uh, electricity use for homes generally runs somewhere between six and 11,000 per year. Uh, and that's when you aren't using electricity to heat. So at 24,000 kilowatt hours a year, that was a lot of electricity, um, which wasn't surprising. That also was a colder winter than what I'm going to show you here. Um, well, what I'm going to show you next, rather. So let's take a look at that 24,000. And uh, we built a calculator built on Department of Energy data um, of about 9,000 homes across the U.S. And uh, we can query that data to see how different homes compare and usage per square foot per year. And we can consolidate any fuel type into this uh, calculation. So this house was doing pretty well when you look at it. So um, it was in the top 79%. So there were 79% of homes in Ohio that were of similar size, the plus or minus 500 square feet, 700 square feet or thereabouts. And uh, so you can see that it, it uses a good bit less energy. So it's pretty good. You can see the red dot here, uh, but it's not an outlier by any means. So this is before we did uh, the air sealing and the spray foam. Now, post-project, 
we got almost exactly half of the energy use out of it, uh, which this is a remarkable number. And there are a few things in here. So part of this is this is an easier winner. Uh, also, uh, I figured out some tweaks to make in the settings of the heat pump that made it use a lot less energy. Um, and uh, uh, then we also were, were tightening the house. So there were three different factors going in there, and it's difficult to pull any one out as the main reason why all this worked. But needless to say, the energy use of this house plummeted, and this is a really impressive number. So I, not every time, but I'd say one out of ten, one out of eight homes when I go to somebody's house, their energy use for electricity is above 12,000 kilowatt hours a year. And you have to keep in mind, that's when they're heating with natural gas or propane or oil. This is heating, cooling. This is the water heater. This is lighting. Uh, this client is a, a video editor, so uh, this runs his servers. This is everything is 12,000 kilowatt hours a year. That is a pretty killer number. Um, so, and I, I was just tickled that it was 50% less than numbers could have been more perfect. It was like 49.97% or something like that. It was ridiculously close to 50. Um, now, post-project usage per square foot, remember it was um, uh, about 45 before. Now we're down to 24 and a half. This is a really good number. Um, a really good. So uh, we're down to where we're in the bottom 7% of comparable homes. Uh, that's a remarkable feat for a 100-year-old home in Cleveland, Ohio. So you have to keep in mind like, that this is possible, but it's really only possible in this case when you have a house that's reasonably tight and efficient. So you may have one now, but the only way to find out is to test using a blower door. So you, you have to find out how much the house leaks. The leakage, when it gets very cold, when heat pumps start losing the war, uh, the leakage increases drastically. So uh, it's really critical that houses are tight if you want the heat pump to work well. So this is where you need to pay attention to design. Uh, you need to step back and plan what you want to do to the house. And uh, the best way to do that is with what we call a home performance specialist. So it's someone who helps you uh, from start to finish. So they're not only helping you diagnose the home and figure out how you're going to solve problems, but then they help you execute the project all the way through to the other side uh, and then follow up to make sure that it worked. So um, uh, if, if they follow the full arc of the project, this is what we do. And we found that if we let off anywhere within that arc, the odds of failure get much higher. So we watch like a hawk through the entire project. So uh, just to recap, don't heat pumps cost more? Uh, not necessarily. So definitely can be the case, but uh, um, it, don't lose a bet over this one. So the last thing that I want to leave you with is uh, the Home Comfort Book, which is my book, which helps homeowners understand how their homes work and how to actually solve problems at their root rather than chasing symptoms. Uh, that is available uh, on Amazon and on NateTheHouseWhisperer.com. But I would encourage you to download the first chapter, which is free. Um, it's a long chapter. It's uh, 68 pages long. So this is not something where I'm holding back. Uh, this has the tricky job of teaching you the physics of your home in an entertaining manner, I hope. So you'll see my sense of humor shine through in there. Uh, but I highly, highly recommend that you download that. Um, and that's the basics of what I wanted to walk through here today. So don't keep pumps cost more to run than furnaces. Not necessarily. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel. Um, don't forget to download Home Comfort 101. And I don't publish super often, so I would highly recommend clicking the bell and getting notifications when I publish a video. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Nate Adams. Have a great day.